Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Star Citizen video. I am Aerodox, and there on my left is Malterra. Today, we are going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. We've got ship sizes, ship weapon types, ship weapon sizes, and missiles, and all things in between, including gimbals, firing modes, and targeting. We are going to be trying to be as detailed as possible in the hopes that everything we are about to unload on you will be underneath your belt, and you will be the one to arise victorious the next time you are engaged in ship-to-ship -ship combat. And I think with all of that out of the way, we are going to roll the intro and just dive right in. Alright, now ships are grouped into one of five different ship sizes, with snub being the smallest and capital ships being the largest. Altogether, we've got snub, small, medium, large, and capital. And generally speaking, the larger the ship, the more functionality certain ship roles can have. Some roles are excluded from certain ship sizes, like a capital ship obviously can't be a light fighter, and a small ship can't be a frigate. Now that we've talked about that, we're going to give a brief description of all the different ship sizes. First up, we have the snub ships. Now, snub ships are dedicated support ships made for scouting, planetary exploration or travel, and disembarking from other large ships. Snub ships typically don't have a quantum drive, and due to their compact size can in most cases only accommodate one person. Some notable examples are the 85X and the P-52 Merlin. Next up we have small ships, and small ships are, with some exceptions, always one person ships. They can feature roles like cargo or exploration, but are very limited functionality wise. For instance, with a few exceptions, small ships don't have a vehicle bay. A couple of ships in this category include the 100i, the Arrow, the Avenger Titan, the Blade, the F7A Hornet, the Hurricane, and the Mustang Alpha. But to be clear, there are many more ships in this category. And next up, we have the medium ships. Medium ships can be multi-crew ships, but always have a combined pilot gunner. The main part of a medium ship is typically dedicated to a role, but with limited functionality compared to a large ship. A couple of notable ships in this category include the Ares Starfighter Ion, the Cutlass Black, the Glaive, the Redeemer, and the Vulcan. And next up are large ships. Now, large ships are always multi-crew ships with a dedicated pilot, but there are also many other roles that can be played by other players. Large ships oftentimes have a vehicle bay or a ship hangar and can have a dedicated bridge. A couple of ships in this category include the 400i, the Carrick, the Caterpillar, the Corsair, the Liberator, and the Reclaimer. And last, and definitely not least, we have the capital ships. Now, capital ships are multi-deck ships with rooms or decks dedicated to a role like bridge, medical facility, flight deck, habitation, or exploration. And an interesting note, the smallest capital ship is the Polaris with a footprint of 155 meters by 82 meters by 35 meters. Some other ships in this category include the 890 Jump, the Driller, the Bengal, the Kraken, the Orion, and of course, the Polaris. One thing to note is that the ship size reflects the required size of a landing pad or hangar, so depending on the ship that you have, you might end up at your destination and find that you have nowhere to park. And next up on our list of things to talk about today, we have ship weapon types. These weapon types include laser, ballistic, and distortion weapons. Starting off with the laser or energy weapon types, laser weapons focus light through a lens array into a maser bottle. From there, they are used to create weapons that damage both the ships and the ship's shields. The shield systems take damage from energy systems, and once the shields are temporarily disabled, the energy weapons begin to melt the targeted ship's hull. Energy weapons generate a large amount of electromagnetic radiation, which can be exploited by your enemy's electronic warfare systems to return fire. Energy weapons do not require ammo, and slowly recharge during combat, making them a serious ally to anyone who wants to survive long term. Within the laser weapon category, we have laser repeaters and laser beams, which are high rate of fire and low DPS. We have the laser cannons, which are medium fire and medium DPS. We have the neutron cannons and neutron repeaters, which are low fire rate and high DPS. We have the plasma scatter guns and laser scatter guns, which are low fire rate and high DPS as well. And we have the tachyon cannons, which are also low fire rate and high DPS. 
Basically, the takeaway here is that laser weapons do not require ammo and do damage to both shields and ships. The only downside here is that the electromagnetic radiation produced by your weapons makes it easier for you to be targeted by your enemies. Next up, we have ballistic weapons. Ballistic weapons fire a solid or explosive projectile at high speed using the ship's limited store of ammunition. Ballistic weapons penetrate some percentage of the enemy's shields between 20 to 60 percent depending on that shield, and deal the remaining damage directly to the hull. These projectile weapons do not use any energy and generate minimal to zero heat signature on firing, but do require ammunition. The projectiles are generally slower than energy projectiles, but can travel farther without the loss of efficiency, and the rapid firing time Types are ideal for point defense against missiles and torpedoes. Within the ballistic weapon category, we have ballistic repeaters and gatlings, which are high rate of fire and low DPS. We have the ballistic cannons, which are medium rate of fire and medium DPS. We have the ballistic scatter guns, which are low rate of fire and high DPS in a spread pattern. We have the mass drivers, which are low rate of fire and high DPS. And then we have the high explosive cannons, which are low rate of fire and high DPS with an air of effect. The main takeaway from this is that ballistic weapons are going to cause damage directly to the hull and some of it is going to be dropped off at the shield, meaning you're going to cause direct damage to the hull and generate less signature so it's harder to target you. The downside being once you've run out of ammo, that's it, you're done. And finally, we have distortion weapons. Distortion weapons are a unique derivative of energy weapons that inflict intense electrical discharge rather than thermal damage. Though they can't harm hull integrity directly, these weapons are highly effective at depleting shields, including shield faces adjacent to the struck face, and upon impacting unshielded hull, will degrade the shield's power systems and component performance, eventually leading to a complete power plant outage under sustained fire. Distortion weapons weapons enable a ship to be disabled without destroying it, and law enforcement officers, including bounty hunters and pirates, routinely fit them to help seize vessels. Within distortion weapons, there are distortion repeaters, which are high rate of fire and low DPS, we have distortion cannons, which are medium rate of fire and medium DPS, and then finally we have distortion scatter guns, which are low rate of fire and high DPS in a spread pattern. The takeaway here being that distortion weapons are generally used to deplete shields. If you can break through your opponent's shield, you'll start doing damage to their onboard systems. This is useful if you don't want to destroy the ship for whatever reason. And finally, if you pair distortion weapons with ballistic weapons, you get a pretty powerful result. Next up on the list are ship weapon sizes. Every ship can have different size weapons mounted to them. These sizes are ranges 1 to 10. Generally speaking, smaller ships will have smaller size weapons, and larger ships will have larger weapons. And then there are also two ways of mounting weapons to your ship. You can mount them in a fixed pattern or a gimbal pattern. If the weapons are fixed, you're going to have to do the aiming yourself, but you'll gain a little bit of DPS. If you want to gimbal your weapons, then you're going to have to find the right gimbal sizes. And on top of that, once you apply a gimbal mount to a weapon, you'll have to downgrade one level from the weapon's original size. So if your ship takes size 3 weapons, and you want to use gimbals on that ship, you'll have to fit a size 3 gimbal on that ship, and then a size 2 weapon. Missiles are the same, except they don't use gimbals. And if you prefer fixed weapons, then you can just slap a size 3 weapon on a size 3 slot. Alright, so you've got your weapons, and you've got your missiles, and you're about to go into combat. What do we do from here? As you can see here, as I got close to my target, a red wing symbol showed up. Now, we can just go ahead and blind fire at this target, but there's an easier way, and all we have to do is target it. And we do that by pressing the T key while we are in range. As you can see there, the target is now highlighted. At this point, we're going to want to press the G key, and we're going to see that a circle has appeared around our reticle. This means that our gimbals are now activated. Once we get within weapon range, we're going to see a green circle show up inside of our reticle. This means that our weapons are now locked onto target. As long as we keep the enemy ship within range and within this giant circle, we're going to be able to hit them with our weapons. What we've just shown you is called Gimbal Assist Mode, but there's another mode called Gimbal Manual Mode. To activate Gimbal Manual Mode, you just have to press G again. Activating Gimbal Manual Mode allows you to direct weapon fire yourself, as you can see on screen right here. If your weapons are fixed, then the green circle will still show up. However, you'll need to keep your main firing reticle lined up with the green circle yourself. To get us started with missiles, there are three types of them. These include the infrared missiles, the electromagnetic missiles, and the cross-section missiles. 
infrared missiles track locked on ships by their heat and infrared emissions. An easier lock can be acquired on ships that are running hot by using more energy weapons or less heat efficient components. Infrared guidance can be fooled by flares and can potentially lock on to an incorrect target with a similar heat signature. Electromagnetic missiles track locked on ships by their electromagnetic emissions, which are released by electronic weapons and components. Careful energy management and efficient components can reduce a ship's EM signature to make locking more difficult. EM missiles can be defeated with chaff countermeasures. Cross-section missiles lock onto a ship's cross-section and appearance. Lock-on time is long compared to IR and EM locking, but more difficult to fool and unlikely to track the wrong target. And then on top of that, you've also got three different types of payloads. You've got high explosive payloads, electromagnetic pulse payloads, and cluster munition explosive projectiles. High explosive missiles detonate directly on a targeted ship, causing severe damage to a ship's shields, hull, and impacted components. Electromagnetic pulse missiles detonate on or near a targeted ship, causing significant damage to shields and potentially disabling major components on the ship, much like a distortion projectile weapon. And then cluster munitions approach the targeted ship and fire a cluster of submunitions that weaken the armor or shields, leaving the target vulnerable to heavy payload that follows. And now you're saying to me, okay, that's all well and good, but how do I use them? By default, to switch to your missiles, you're going to click down on the mouse wheel. Once you do that, you're going to see this screen over here change to your missiles. And this green bar here is going to begin filling up. Once you've pressed T and targeted your opponent, a green 3D circle is going to begin to build itself around the target once you are in range. Once the circle has stopped building itself, it means you have successfully locked onto your target and you are ready to fire. An easy way of knowing whether or not you're actually hitting your target is by checking out this screen up here. So I would suggest configuring your panels to show your target screen if you're going to be going into combat. Alright, so what do we do if we're being targeted by missiles? First what's going to happen is you're going to see this incoming missile warning right here on the screen. At this point we need to activate either our decoys or our chaff. And we do this by hitting the H and J keys respectively. And remember that infrared and EMP can both be defeated by decoy and chaff again respectively but the CM missiles are much harder to shake. And then finally we're gonna cover turrets. And we can give our thanks to Mall Terror over here who has done a deep dive on exactly what all these things for the turrets do. If you are in a turret on a ship you have a whole bunch of options available to you. First up we have gyro mode. By default gyro mode is already enabled when you enter the cockpit. And all it does is keep the turret stable while the ship is in motion. And if it becomes deactivated somehow you can hit the G button to reactivate it. Next up we have staggered firing mode. To activate staggered firing mode we hit the V key and once it's activated the turret will alternate each barrel as it fires and next up we have enhanced stick precision mode also known as ESP ESP mode will lower the sensitivity and increase the fidelity of the turrets aim when your crosshairs are on the enemy pips and you can toggle ESP mode by hitting E. Next up is relative mode. By default, relative mode is not enabled. And basically what it does is it locks the crosshairs onto your mouse. So instead of the turret playing catch up with your mouse, you can activate relative mode. Relative mode is toggled by pressing Q. While you're in the turret and firing away at your targets, it's possible that you might become lost or unable to easily locate the front of the ship. In this case, you can hit the C key and this will automatically align you to the front of the ship. And then finally, we have the turret speed limiter. To toggle the turret speed limiter on and off, you can use the left shift button. This bar down here is the current value of your speed limiter settings. And to easily adjust it, you can scroll up or down on the mouse wheel. If you want an even more detailed video on all things turret related, there will be a link in the video description below. And I think that just about covers all the basics of ship combat, so we're going to go ahead and end the video here. Thanks for hanging out and watching the video to the end, and don't forget to show us some love. If you like what you saw here today, you could drop us a like, and if you want to be notified when our next video comes out, you could hit the notification bell and definitely subscribe. We are a relatively new channel, so everything you guys can do will help us out a ton. But as always, we hope to see you out in the verse soon, and most importantly, don't forget your med pens. Peace.